With a €200,000 bounty on his head, 31-year-old Joseph Johannes Leideckers, commonly known as Joss, is one Europol's most wanted European fugitives. Shockingly, given his young age, Joss is believed to be the mastermind behind cocaine drug trafficking, multi-million euro money laundering, mysterious disappearances, suspected murders and high-profile kidnap attempts. But who is this young cocaine cowboy that the Dutch underworld fears? What is the truth and motive behind his alleged crimes? And where has the fugitive run to? A report from the Dutch Police Association warns that the Netherlands is fast becoming a narco state, a hotbed of organized crime. Professor Peter Topps, a world-leading author and researcher on the Dutch drug trade, estimated that the production and sale of synthetic drugs was worth nearly 20 billion euros, positioning the Netherlands as one of the largest illegal drug economies in the Western world. Describing the Netherlands as a narco state seems excessive, but what is it that attracts these dangerous drug criminals to its lands? Is it the extensive transportation links through the ports of Antwerp and Rotterdam, providing easy access to lucrative markets across the globe? How about the lenient laws, where a conviction in the Netherlands will earn you just a five-year sentence, meagre compared to Europe and the rest of the world? Or perhaps the underbelly of corruption and under-resourcing of police make the risk of getting caught pretty low in the first place? As the author Roberto Saviano so eloquently said, Whoever controls the Netherlands has one of the arteries of the global drug market. Top criminals know this too well, and so the competition is rife. When you dig into the names of the people tied to the Dutch underworld, you'll hear the same two words, Mokro Mafia. Street slang used to describe young working class men hiding off the tourist track and seeking to make their millions in the drugs trade. First coined in a book by Wouter Laumans and Marin Schriever, Mokro Mafia now fills police files and has even been turned into a rap and a three-season TV series. As an umbrella term, the Mokro Mafia consists of many sub-organizations, clans and gangs, all at war and all wanting the same thing, the monopoly over the Dutch drug market empire. Ridwan Tagi, Samir Bouyakrichan, the El Yusfi family, big names, all vying for their position and their slice of the pie. But a new name is causing ripples in the Dutch underworld. There is word on the street of Anel President, a new king of the Dutch cocaine industry, a young man who will stop at nothing to win, a ruthless and violent man to be feared. This man, Jos Lidekkers. Jos was born on the 1st of July, 1991, in Breda, the Netherlands. As a child, he must change schools several times because of behavioural problems and comes into contact with the law. In the summer of 2008, then 17 years old, he receives 27 days of juvenile detention for assaulting another youth in Ettenleur. Jos confesses to being involved, but insists he did not land serious blows. In the verdict, the judges note that the suspect considers himself a problem-free young man and that a psychologist has not diagnosed any disorder. However, the psychologist found it striking that Joss talked a lot, did so in a compelling manner, and was obsessive about being in the right. The Child Protection Board and the Youth Probation Service share a similar observation, that the young Lidecker's cannot deal with differing opinions and his self-reflection is very limited. In February 2011, at Scheveningen Beach in The Hague, Lidecker's, just 19, got into a fight over a bar stool in a cafe. He shoots a man with a converted semi-automatic alarm pistol on the street, not far from De Pere. A bullet passes through the victim's chest and pierces one lung, another ends up in his pubic area. The man luckily survives, but it later turns out that the bullets cannot be removed from his spine and groin without risking his life, so they stay put. Lideckers also shoots the victim's brother, who wanted to appease the quarrel. He takes a grazing shot. Witnesses, including the brother, described the shooter as a white man with shaved hair and a conspicuous round face. A police dog finds the fleeing Lideckers in a garden. He gets six years in prison for a double attempted murder. Joss has been named as somewhat of a cocaine mafioso after Belgian authorities intercepted encrypted messages detailing two large cocaine shipments from the port of Antwerp. The first shipment was believed to have gone wrong after Joss was tipped off about personnel keeping watch over the port. Going about his daily business, this watchman, Rick, was kidnapped by five men, 
later claiming to police that he was brutally beaten and had his head placed in a bag. Managing to get loose and jump freely into the cold Scheldt River, Rick was fortunate to escape with his life. Joss, likely furious by the multi-million pound mishap, was not deterred and started working on the second transportation right away. Through more intercepted messages, Joss is caught telling an accomplice, nicknamed Tetris, that a further 550 kilograms of cocaine is ready to be dispatched from two ports in Latin America. Suspecting his communication channel of being hacked, Joss switches messaging platforms and the authorities lose track of his conversations. However, one of Joss's known associates wrote that everything's loaded, so the big money shipment was thought to have been successful. Accounts of the true extent of cocaine smuggled by Joss and his gang vary, with Belgian authorities claiming that 15,000 kilos, a whopping half a billion pounds, was a more accurate representation of Joss's enterprise. During a hushed trial held in Liège in May 2023, the mastermind plan behind the drug trafficking was revealed. The cocaine was believed to originate from Colombia and Brazil and was shipped into Europe through containers of tropical fruit and cashew nuts. To avoid being detected by sniffer dogs and custom security checks, the narcotics were chemically dissolved into clothing and transported to gang-owned laundrettes in the Ardennes, where it was cleverly extracted and pressed into blocks. The police confiscated 29 microwaves at the scene, believing them to have been used in the process of drying out the drugs for resale. You may wonder how an individual can seemingly fast forward to the highest echelons of organized crime without a lengthy career of building the foundations. According to sources within the criminal environment, his father was active in the drug trade in Joss's young years and is said to have built up good contacts in the seaports of Rotterdam and Antwerp, which his son will later develop much further. In 2014, he was detained with the Surinamese drug trafficker, Piet Wartel, who is currently imprisoned in the Netherlands for laundering millions of euros, but is also suspected of involvement in drug trafficking. It can be assumed that Joss has made some very interesting contacts whilst serving time. Wartel has also been linked to two recent killings, of the former professional football player Kelvin Maynard in September 2019 in Amsterdam, and of 23-year-old Gensiel Feller from Zuidust in Curaçao. According to police sources, Lideckers is also linked to those murders, but he has not yet been charged. According to detectives, both men were murdered because, in July 2019, a 400 kilogram batch of cocaine was intercepted. During the investigation into the two murders and the drug trade, prominent criminals from the southeast of Amsterdam were reviewed. According to the judiciary, some were ordered to come to Suriname after the incident where the drugs went missing. One of them is Joel H., better known as the criminal gangster rapper Joey A.K., frontman of the rap group Zone 6 from Hollandrecht. During that period, there was a meeting between Lideckers and one of the well-known criminals from Zuidust in the Waldorf Astoria Hotel on the Herengracht. Currently, there is an ongoing trafficking case going through the courts in Amsterdam, codenamed Cherokee, and Joss's name is frequently mentioned within the case file. He hasn't been formally charged whilst he is a fugitive. However, his apparent accomplice, a man named as Isaac B, but uses the street alias Bomb, has, and was given 12 years in absentia. He is thought to be hiding out in Africa as he was born in Ghana, and his father is from Togo. The judiciary also shed some light on the extreme violence she attributed to Lideckers. One of the imported batches, 676 kilos of cocaine that had been brought in via the port of Antwerp, was caught in the hidden space of a car. Joss soon got hold of the criminal file on that catch and discussed with Isaac B whether the police had perhaps been given a heads up and whether the tipster's head should be cut off. It's not simply threats that the young Dutchman is accused of, but also putting his words into action. On Thursday, the 21st of September, 2017, at around 9.30 in the evening, 55-year-old Stefan Bogarts was shot dead in his car in Spikenisse in the Netherlands. Bogarts was a businessman and made his trade by selling shipping containers. Despite his successful business, it was believed that Bogarts was in a substantial amount of debt and turned to drug dealing to get back on his feet. Bogart's friends noticed a suspicious change in his behaviour five days prior to his death. Did he get in too deep? Was he stepping too close to Joss's territory? Bogart's rolled up in his black Volkswagen Jetta near a cafe bar in Spikenisse and was tragically shot to death at close range. 
Authorities are unsure what took Bogarts to the Listrat that fateful night, but noticed a congregation of men at the same cafe bar. These men were part of a notorious motorbike gang, Kola Wago, a group of outlaws believed to be connected to Joss. After the shooting, witnesses saw a black BMW M5 hurtling towards Winston Churchillan. In a matter of minutes, the same car was found ablaze near a creperie in Akta Zedek. Through running checks in their database, the police were able to decipher that the vehicle was in fact stolen and given a fake license plate. What's more, the perpetrators disposed of their clothing in the vehicle, allowing for DNA evidence to be retrieved and analyzed, and for subsequent arrests to be made. As a result, on Tuesday the 21st of April 2020, two members of the Carlo Wago were arrested on suspicion of murder. A 33-year-old unnamed man from The Hague and 49-year-old Jack, who was arrested in Alphen Arn Den Rien prison, where he was already incarcerated for a previous drug-related offence. It is true that it takes one man to pull a trigger, but the question remains, on whose orders and for what end? Joss was certainly not discriminatory when it came to his victims. When we think of drug crimes throughout history, they often centre around male protagonists. Even the references are gendered. We have drug lords, drug barons, drug kingpins. But in 2005, the queen of cartels, the godmother of coke, Naima Jalal, was on the Dutch police's radar. But just as quickly as she emerged, she mysteriously disappeared without a trace. Jalal was born in Nador, Morocco, on the 4th of January 1967, but later immigrated to Utrecht in the Netherlands. Jalal first became known by the authorities in 2005 when she was charged with threatening behavior and the growing of marijuana. As a defense, Jalal told authorities that she had financial troubles and owed money to a lot of different people. From 2010, Jalal was thought to be networking with some prominent figures in the Dutch drug trade, from Samir Bouyakrichan, Mustafa El Fektali, and Piet Costa. When Bouyakrichan was assassinated in Spain by a rival gang, El Fektali became the leader of the group and quickly made an ally of Jalal, recognizing her talents as a fluent Spanish speaker and her aptitude for organization, schmoozing, and logistics. Now living in her luxury apartment near Malaga in Spain, Jalal was operating as the middlewoman, using her Spanish language skills to liaise with her clients at all levels. The drug dealers on the streets, the bosses paying for the shipments, the drug lords supplying the cargo, and the corrupt security agents on the ground, not one to shy away from expensive shopping sprees, it is clear that Jalal enjoyed the affluence and extravagant lifestyle her business dealings enabled. But perhaps her avarice got the better of her as she started to knowingly oversell and overpromise more than she could deliver. To cover her back, she supposedly tipped off police who intercepted the shipments, ultimately defrauding the drug dealers of their supply whilst pocketing the money herself. On May 30th of 2016, things go drastically wrong for Jalal. Encrypted messages between the godfather, believed to be Moa's F, and aunt, believed to be Jalal, suggest that 4,000 kilograms of cocaine smuggled from Costa Rica to Rotterdam via a container of pineapples is about to be rumbled by the feds. Those containers are for scanning. We're fucked, aunt. We can't pick them up. This is about a lot of money and long prison terms, auntie. And Costa is screwed. Everything is broken now. We have to do some damage control. We will just put out a new story. Agreed. Once again, law enforcement was tipped off about the suspicious shipment, a tactic of which Jalal has used before. Was she behind the anonymous tip-off? And was this the mistake that ultimately cost her her life? With rumors flying around that she was playing a double agent in multiple drug gangs in the Mokro Mafia, and accusations hinting that she was working undercover as a police informant, Jalal now had a lot of enemies, big enemies in very high places. In October of 2019, Jalal had a gastric bypass operation in Spain before flying back to Amsterdam to recuperate in her apartment at the Gustav Malalan in Zuidas. Last seen on CCTV cameras wearing dark clothing and a long grey coat, whilst walking back to her apartment, Jalal gets into a Volkswagen Polo at around 9.30 in the evening. She is never seen alive or heard from again. The story went from bad to worse as gruesome photographs started circulating on an online Telegram chat group. The first photo showed a woman, closely resembling Jalal, 
bound to a chair naked with a severed finger on her stomach. The second photo shows the same woman lying face down on the floor. Although there was no formal identification of Jilal, these findings led Dutch authorities to publicly announce Jilal's death on the 9th of June 2020. But it was not until late February 2021, via the Opsporing Wertzocht broadcast, that Jose's name was first connected to the disappearance of Jilal. It was at this time that Dutch police officers discovered yet more incriminating messages relating to a three-way planned cocaine shipment between Jos, the investor, Piet Costa, the supplier, and Jilal, the logistician. This large shipment from Colombia was intercepted and seized by police in the port of Antwerp in 2019, another tip-off from Jilal, perhaps. The Dutch underworld warned don't joke around with Bol Jos, and defrauding him might be perceived as the biggest joke of them all. Did Jos, with his ego slighted, retaliate and order her demise? Further circumstantial evidence linking Jos to Jalal's fate comes on the 15th of March 2021, when, in a storage shed close to the port of Antwerp, some of Jalal's belongings were found. The shed, linking to where Jos's henchmen were thought to store drugs, was excavated, and electronic radars and sniffer dogs led them to a handbag and various items of Jalal's clothing. The final puzzle piece of this never-ending mystery came in April of 2022, when detectives tracked an IMEI number and located the aforementioned gruesome photographs on Ridwan Targi's BlackBerry cell phone. Metadata extracted from these photographs suggested they were taken on the same evening that Jalal disappeared, further adding to the credibility that the woman in the photographs was, indeed, that Naima Jalal. Targi's lawyer, Inez Weski, protests his innocence, and Targi himself refuses to break his silence. To this day, no one has been charged in the kidnapping and suspected murder of Jalal. As comes as no surprise, our fugitive Joss has a lot of questions to answer. Even now, in 2023, the rabbit holes get deeper and deeper as, yet again, Joss's name is at the forefront of alleged criminal activity. This time, it's in the alleged attempted kidnapping of two prominent political figures, both spearheading the crackdown of organized drug crime in their respective nations. On Thursday, the 22nd of September, 2022, Vincent van Quickenborn, the Belgian Minister of Justice and Safety, received a phone call from a federal prosecutor warning him of an active kidnapping plot against him. Quickenborn was immediately placed under strict security measures as further investigations took place. In a state address, Quickenborn blamed a prominent drugs gang for being behind the kidnapping threat, accusing them of retaliating against the increased action to shut down the drug smuggling between Latin America and Europe via the ports of Antwerp and Rotterdam. Police spotted a suspicious car parked near Quickenborn's home in Kortik, in Flanders. Upon searching the vehicle, they found multiple Kalashnikovs, guns, weapons, containers of petrol and plastic tie restraints. To date, there have been five arrests in the case, five Dutch nationals aged 48, 29, 22, 21 and 20. All the unnamed assailants are currently facing extradition. Another kidnapping threat occurred on January 11th of 2023, this time against former Dutch Justice Minister Ferdinand Grapperhaus. Grapperhaus, like Quickenborn, was taking strong action against organized drug crime in the Netherlands. Although finer details of the plot have been kept under wraps by the Dutch media, thankfully the Royal and Diplomatic Security Service acted quickly and Grapper House was placed under high security measures for a number of weeks. According to a Dutch news source, Perul, Jos has been directly named as the person behind the plot. In recent times, some of the major players in European organized crime have fallen to the good work of the police. In March of 2021, the Marengo trial marked a breakthrough by Dutch authorities to finally bring Ridwan Targi and his 16 gang members to trial. A year later, in 2022 in Switzerland, Floor Bressers, a drug lord nicknamed Finger Cutter, implicated in kidnappings, assaults and high-stake drug deals, was also arrested and will also soon stand trial. Wrongdoers are finally starting to pay for their crimes, but the question on everyone's lips where is Joss Lidecker's? With the bounty for information leading to his arrest increasing from 75,000 euros to 200,000 euros, the urgency to find him is growing and growing. 
Dutch detectives have taken a more direct route in trying to bury into the whereabouts of Joss by targeting his family. In January of 2023, Joss's 68-year-old mother and 27-year-old sister, both of whom have remained unnamed by Dutch police, were questioned in their Breda home about his whereabouts. During the questioning, the police discovered fake German passports, tens of thousands in euros and other foreign currencies, and a plethora of expensive jewellery, designer handbags and technical equipment. The seized money and goods were believed to have a criminal origin, and therefore both women were arrested on suspicion of money laundering. A couple of months later, Joss's 68-year-old father, Lidecker Sr., was also paid a visit in his Rotterdam home. Here, the police seized two watches thought to be worth in the region of 140,000 euros. All three family members were released on bail, but face prosecution for money laundering. The family's lawyer, Mr. Guy Weske, has accused the Dutch police of abusing their authoritarian powers by using family members as a means of pressure to track down Jos. Weske maintains that the family members are the victims of this and not involved in anything. But where does the family's responsibility start and end? The authorities have assumed for years that Lidecker's went into hiding in Dubai after an initial emigration to Spain and later to Turkey. It is suspected that he is still there. It's not easy to get hold of him. The Netherlands has good contacts with the police and judiciary in Turkey, but the role of the secret services is more difficult. Good sources have confirmed the rumor that Lidecker's has already been arrested twice in Turkey, but has been released after substantial payments. With no reported sightings, only four photographs published online, and familial and criminal connections maintaining their silence, will Joss ever be found? You have been watching OCG TV. Thanks for watching another episode, and keep your eye on our channel for an incredible story coming out of the Irish underworld. As always, it would really help the channel if you could like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Till next time.